Israel and the Jews. How are they connected? First, let's get something straight. Judea, Canaan, Holy Land, Zion, Israel. All are names for the same tiny piece of land. It's a country so small its name doesn't fit inside it. A bazillion years ago, Abraham, a nomadic visionary with a thin resume, has a hot idea for the first Israeli startup, a belief in one God. Needless to say, his stock tanks. Abraham persists, and when he's not persisting, he's begetting. His offspring move to Egypt because there are jobs, food, and beautiful beaches there. Sort of an early Miami. But there's a snag. The jobs don't pay and the hours are murder. The Egyptians enslave the Israelites for hundreds of years until Moses, a great leader with a questionable sense of direction, unenslaves them and returns them to Canaan. En route to Canaan, the Israelites constantly bellyache. Tired of their whining, Moses climbs Mount Sinai. He becomes the first human to download data from the cloud to a tablet and returns with the Ten Commandments, a moral code to share with the world. Wow, thanks. The Eleventh Commandment, Thou shalt not bitch, does not make the cut. Once in Canaan, the Philistines, a people of Greek heritage, not to be confused with today's Palestinians, are the Israelites' fiercest enemies. One day, a huge son of a bitch named Goliath challenges the Israelites to a winner-takes-all match. The smart money is on Goliath, but he is whooped by a diminutive shepherd sharpshooter called David. Hashtag Israelites for the win. The Israelites anoint David king, who makes Jerusalem Israel's capital. Yep, that's a thousand years B.C. The UN immediately condemns this as an immoral and irresponsible act that is meant to provoke the Palestinians. Not really. There was no UN and 3,000 years would go by before the Palestinians would try to usurp this land. David's son Solomon builds the temple in Jerusalem. The temple has a good 400-year run playing to packed houses until the Babylonians destroy it. Most of the Jews are forced into exile. After 50 years in exile, the Jews are liberated by the Persians and are allowed to return home. They build a new temple atop the ruins of the first. Then Alexander the Great, a great Greek king and, you guessed it, another invader, destroys Persia and takes over Judea. The Jews and Alexander's heirs get along great until another Greek king, Antiochus the not-so-great, says, enough with the one god thing. All hail Zeus and friends! The Jews revolt and clobber the Greeks. Antiochus amasses a huge army and threatens the Jews. The Jews send a reply, fight me. We did not take any foreign territory. We merely recovered our ancestral lands. The Jews prevail and rededicate the temple. But how long can a good thing last in this neighborhood? A century later, Rome is at the gates and Judea becomes its vassal state. A Jewish baby named Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Jesus has new ideas, but he's accused of sedition. The Roman prefect sentences him to death. The new Jewish sect grows and becomes Christianity, which gives the world the gifts of bacon, eternal salvation, and a whole new set of books. The Jews tire of the Roman rule and finally say, Enough already! They revolt against Rome. The Romans demolish the Jewish rebels and for good measure, and for absolutely no good reason, also pillage and demolish the second temple. Sixty years later, the Jews ask for a rematch and beat the crap <coughs> out of the Romans. The Romans send in the big guns, who ironically have no guns, and beat the crap out of the Jews again. The Romans take two out of three. Hashtag not winning. This time, the Roman emperor decides to be a real pain in the butt. He scatters many of the Jews throughout the Roman Empire, and in the first of very many deliberate falsifications of history, he changes the area's name to, wait for it, wait for it, Syria Palestina, after the Greek Philistines who became extinct 800 years earlier. So Palestine was not a people. It's a made-up name the Roman emperor maliciously attached to Judea, Israel, the land of the Jews. We'll get back to that later. Answer this. The Jews are occupying Palestine. True or false? Or bullshit? It's bullshit. The Jews are the aboriginal people of Judea. Like Greeks in Greece, Native Americans in America, Chinese in China, Jews can't occupy Judea. The quiz is over, and so is Rome. Karma sucks. With much of the Jewish population scattered, Muhammad, a charismatic leader, appears in what is now Saudi Arabia and unites diverse nomadic Arab tribes under the banner of Islam. After Muhammad's death, his followers conquer the land of Israel and build the Al-Aqsa Mosque atop the ruins of the first and second Jewish temples, Judaism's holiest site. Next up, the Dark Ages. Not a good time to be Jewish. The Middle Ages, still very dark. Jews take the rap for the Romans' killing of Jesus and are subjected to random killing sprees, mob riots, expulsions, and monstrous persecution. Christian crusaders spend years trying to conquer Jerusalem from the Muslims. As soon as they succeed, they promptly begin to slaughter the Muslims and the Jews. Next, this total curd Saladin takes Jerusalem from the crusaders. Oh wait, write this down. Saladin is not an Arab. He's a Kurd, born in today's eastern Turkey. Palestine is still just a misnamed geographical area. If some peddler of an alternate reality tells you that there was an independent Palestinian state or kingdom or whatever, you can politely ask him, what borders did it have? Who ruled it? From when to when did it exist? The squirming to try to explain it will be illuminating. Food for thought. If Palestine were some ancient Arab country, they probably would have had a different name for it. Just as there are Arabic sounds with no equivalent sounds in English, in the Arabic alphabet, not a single Arabic word has the P sound in it. Google it. Knock knock. Who's there? It's the Ottoman Turks. Their turn to conquer the Holy Land. They rule corruptly and peacefully for 400 years. So what happened to the Jews? Despite all attempts to eliminate, exterminate, exile, and forcibly convert the Jews, they consistently and continuously maintained a presence in the land of Israel.
Jews from almost every country under the sun, in ghettos in Poland, under the Inquisition in Spain, and in concentration camps across Europe, focus their prayers on Israel, the only place where they have been able to do what every nation does, construct their own society according to their own ideals. Ready for a question? Okay. Jerusalem is just as sacred to the Muslims as it is to the Jews. True or false? Five Pinocchios. Jerusalem is mentioned over 800 times in the Bible and zero times in the Quran. Zero as in zip, nada, nil, not even once. Feel free to fact check. From its first days under King David, Jerusalem has served as the capital of only one nation. The Jewish nation. The 1880s see increased immigration of Jews returning to their ancestral homeland. The malaria-ridden swamps are drained and agricultural communities thrive in the once barren hills. The 19th century. Revolutions and reforms are in the air. Nations crave freedom. The Jews around the world feel it's time. A journalist named Herzl founds a Zionist movement for the return of Jews to their homeland. As more Jews come to the Holy Land, the resulting economic boom attracts Arabs from as far away as Algeria and Syria. A quick quiz. The Jews are not a nation. True or false? The Jews are the only nation on earth that inhabits the same land, bears the same name, speaks the same language, and worships the same God that it did 3,000 years ago. You can argue with a taxi driver in Tel Aviv about which route to take using the same language that Moses used to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. World War I is over. The winners hold a conference in San Remo, Italy, called, for the lack of a more original name, the San Remo Conference, to redraw the map of the Middle East. They create new borders and new countries. An area approximating present-day Israel plus Jordan is given to England. Their assignment and sworn task is to establish thereon a national home for the Jewish people. There's no mention in the document of granting land to any non-Jewish entity. The plan is to give the Jews back the land taken from them by an endless string of empires. The plan is ratified unanimously by the League of Nations, today's United Nations. The Brits waste no time in screwing the Jews. They welch on their promise and give more than three quarters of the territory to Abdullah, a Saudi prince, for another brand new Arab state called Transjordan. Maybe they mistook Abdullah for a Jew. As to the rest, guess what? Of all of the new borders and new countries created since World War I, the only area that is referred to as occupied by some and disputed by others is that tiny piece of land allocated to the Jewish people. All other decisions are considered binding by most of the world. To prove their claim to the entire land of Israel, the Arabs launched terrorist attacks against the Jews. By this time, everyone living in the area called Palestine is called a Palestinian. This includes all the Jews, Arabs, Muslims, Druze, Christians, and a camel named Benny. In Europe, the satanic Nazis are dedicated to exterminating all the Jews. Jews everywhere fight on the side of the Allies. The central Arab leader, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, meets with Hitler, and he's not there to talk about buying a summer home in Bavaria. Six million civilian Jews, including 1.5 million Jewish children, are exterminated before the Nazis are defeated. But we digress. The land of Israel does not belong to the Jews as compensation for their suffering. It is theirs by indisputable aboriginal rights derived from their indigenous birth and uninterrupted presence for over 3,000 years. The Holocaust is over, but Arab attacks against the Jews of Palestine continue. Now, an actor who has disappeared 2,000 years ago comes for an encore, the armed and proud Jew. The Jews in their ancestral land of Israel establish armed organizations to defend themselves against Arab terrorists. When the British government closes the ports of Palestine and locks the Jews of Europe together with their exterminators, Jewish militias fight to expel the despicable Brits from the land of Israel. I say. After endless, fruitless peace talks to try to get the Arabs to accept any Jewish homeland in Israel, the British have had enough. They peace out and dump the problem on the newly created UN. The UN decides to divide the remaining small territory into the first Jewish state in nearly 2,000 years, a 22nd Arab state, and a third significant area that includes Jerusalem that would be internationally controlled. By 2021, the world is blessed with 56 Islamic countries, over 100 Christian-majority countries, and one tiny Jewish state. So that you understand, the entire territory allocated to the Jews is about the size of Connecticut. Today's Israel is slightly larger than New Hampshire. Egypt is 36 times as large as Israel, and the United States is 350 times as large. The Jews accept the UN proposal. Remember the phases? That's your land! Okay! No, actually, that's the only part you get to keep. Okay. No, as a matter of fact, this is the only part you get. Oy vey. The Arabs reject even this plan, vowing to push the Jews into the sea. Having a massive numerical advantage, five Arab states, each with a standing army and a total population of over 30 million people, attack the newborn state of 600,000 Jews. It's David versus five Goliaths. A million to one shot comes in. David wins again. Israel repels the attacks and declares its independence. 711,000 Arabs flee from Israel. 156,000 Arabs choose to stay and are brutally given Israeli citizenship and civil rights. 850,000 Jews are driven out of the surrounding Arab countries. Jordan annexes the West Bank, including the holy sites in Jerusalem. They sack, loot, pillage, and desecrate every synagogue and Jewish cemetery in its territory. Egypt claims Gaza. Despite total Arab control of the West Bank and Gaza from 1948 to 1967, the Arab world does not establish a Palestinian state there. Do you get this? They have total control of the so-called occupied territories, and they don't create a Palestinian homeland. Time to test you. Israel is an imperialist country. True or false? Let's look at this ruthless empire. Let's look at how Jews take over the world. Oh, just a moment. The green part is Muslim countries. 
Look how they conquer the world. Just a moment, let's get closer. If you squint a little, you can see those colonizers. Let's tell the world that if they only give us a little more of their land, there will be peace. There's a sucker born every night. But now, Israel commits the most horrific racist genocide of all times. From the 156,000 Arabs that decide to stay in Israel after the war in 1948, only 472,000 are left by 1972, and a mere 875,000 by 1990. And wow, this just in, only 2 million Arabs are left in Israel by 2021. And guess how many Jews are still in Arab lands? Hint, in most Arab countries, the number is so small a centipede could count them on his legs. Fast forward a couple of wars to 1964. The Arab League creates the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO. They mobilize the local Arabs, indoctrinate them with hatred towards Jews, and unite them for the first time in history as the Palestinian people. Mazel tov, a nation is born, the Palestinians. Article 24 of their charter states that the Palestinians have no claim to the West Bank or Gaza, which were under the control of Jordan and Egypt respectively. Their charter calls for the total annihilation of the state of Israel. Three years later, Israel liberates Gaza and the West Bank, and the Palestinians immediately amend Article 24. The stubborn Israelis refuse to be annihilated and are subjected to constant terror attacks continuing to the present day. Pop quiz. The terror is a result of the occupation. True or false? Trick question. What occupation? There is no occupation. Judea, Israel, is the land of the aboriginal Jews. Their indisputable connection to their ancestral homeland is undeniable. It's in the archaeological evidence, the historical record, and the genetic analysis. Arab terrorism started about 50 years before what uninformed people call the occupation. So that can't be its cause. Is it retaliation by anticipation? And then there's this war that lasts six days. It starts when the Egyptian army moves towards the Israeli border, and Egyptian President Nasser boasts, My army will destroy the Zionist entity. Six days later, Israel crushes the four Arab armies that attacked it, conquering the Sinai Peninsula, including Gaza from Egypt and the Golan Heights from Syria. They liberate the so-called West Bank, including the old city of Jerusalem from Jordan. After almost 2,000 years, the Israeli flag is raised over the Western Wall, a remnant of the Jewish Temple, where members of all religions can now pray freely. Since it was built by King David, Jerusalem has been attacked 52 times, besieged 23 times, ransacked 39 times, destroyed twice, rebuilt three times, and captured and recaptured 44 times. 3,000 years later, Jerusalem remains the indivisible capital of Israel. No country's birth certificate is more legitimate than that of Israel. Pop quiz. Israel is rich and the Palestinians are poor. True or false? Mostly true, but why? Have you ever wondered where all the money donated to the Palestinians go, or how Yasser Arafat, the PLO's first president, became the first Palestinian billionaire? No clues needed here. The Palestinian Authority, to this day, uses the foreign aid it receives to pay over $345 million a year to convicted terrorists and their families. After another failed attempt by the Arabs to destroy Israel, a peace agreement with Egypt is signed, then with Jordan, and more recently with African and Gulf states. It just goes to show, when Israel has a partner for peace, it doesn't take long for peace to materialize. Pop quiz. Israel is an apartheid state. True or false? Hogwarts. Sorry, hogwash. Over 20% of Israelis are Palestinians, with full and equal rights. Among Israeli Palestinians are doctors, Supreme Court justice, generals, a Miss Israel, and members of parliament. The Arabic language is recognized under special status in Israel. Palestinians in Israel are freer than in any Arab state. Does that sound like apartheid? You call it. The Palestinians demand a state of their own, clean of Jews. That's because they hate racists. What is it about world leaders that they are comfortable with the concept that if it's a Jewish territory, the rights of the Arabs must be respected, but if it's a territory for the Palestinian state, it must be free of all Jews? And what gives? In 2005, in a thunderstorm of irony, Israel commits ethnic cleansing. It forcibly relocates the entire Jewish population of Gaza, over 8,000 people, creating something that no other civilized country would dare do. With hope for peace, they hand over the entire area to the Palestinians without a single Jew in it. The gratitude is instantaneous. Rockets start flying into Israel. Instead of building Gaza into a thriving, peaceful society, it becomes a terrorist base hell-bent on destroying Israel. So deep is the Palestinian hatred of the Jews that in order not to be seen as taking anything from them, they demolish an extensive infrastructure of greenhouses purchased for them by American donors and which provided thousands of jobs. Here's a present. It's a quiz. Gaza is a huge concentration camp. True or false? It's a big fat lie. The most common medical condition among Gaza's women is obesity. Not exactly the usual concentration camp malady. It's true that to protect Israeli civilians, they can't cross into Israel, but they also share an eight-mile border with Egypt, a Muslim state. Why is it that only Israel is accused of not letting them out? Why don't their Muslim brothers allow them to pass through Egypt? It's for the same reason that Israel doesn't. 2005 sees an increased danger to Israel's security and legitimacy. The attempts to demonize, delegitimatize, and criminalize Israel by some Arab nations is joined by non-state actors such as BDS, J Street, and the New Israel Fund. These Jewish and non-Jewish anti-Semitic provocateurs spread outright lies and malicious misinformation in an attempt to destroy the modern state of Israel. This is the sweetest thing that can be said about them.
After Dachau and Auschwitz, Jews have learned to overcome the likes of these. But not everyone has been drinking from this anti-Semitic Kool-Aid. Many world leaders have loudly and consistently spoke out in support of Israel. Israel must exist and has the right to exist. Israel is the child of hope and home of the brave. You're just going to have to get used to the fact that Jews defend themselves. And another damn quiz. The UN is always condemning Israel. True or false? True. Israel is delegitimized and demonized at the UN like no other country in the world. If Algeria introduced a resolution declaring that the earth was flat and that Israel had flattened it, it would pass by a vote of 164 to 13 with 26 abstentions. Over 70% of all UN General Assembly resolutions single out Israel. Criticizing Israel politics is not anti-Semitic. Disproportionately criticizing and demonizing Israel is anti-Semitic. <coughs> When Israel expels 12 Palestinian agitators, the UN goes ballistic with condemnations. Kuwait and Saudi Arabia expel a million Palestinians after the Gulf War and it's not even put on the UN agenda. Palestinians claim that the key to solving all the Middle East problems is the resolution of the Palestinian-Israeli dispute. If the pure force of repetition would make it true, then this claim would rank right up there with Newton's laws. A Sunni Muslim detonates a car bomb in a crowd of Shiites. In revenge, a Shiite Muslim blows up a sacred Sunni holy site. A million dead in the Iraq-Iran war. Bashar al-Assad uses chemical weapons on his people. Does anyone believe that these Muslim-on-Muslim -Muslim atrocities would stop if we only resolved the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Anyone? The Arabs could have had peace with Israel on very easy terms at any time since 1948. Every Israeli government attempts to reach a peace agreement with the Arabs. The so-called two-state solution is rejected again and again and again and again. President Trump's peace plan is rejected by the Palestinians sight unseen. That's more rejection than you get in show business. Last pop quiz. Promise. If the Palestinians lay down their weapons, there will be no more war. If Israel lays down its weapons, there will be no more Israel. True or false? Unfortunately, true. Israel hopes for peace, although the Palestinians' answer is always the same. No! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. We promise to get back to that, and well, we are back. Palestine today is free, and once again called by its aboriginal name. Israel. Someday, Palestinian leaders will rise who love their people more than they hate Jews, and peace will descend on the region, and the Palestinians will become partners to Israel's incredible story of achievements, prosperity, and quality of life. For a transcript of this video, complete with the sources for all the information provided here, please go to therealhistoryofisrael.com.